Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 21st episode of the Chicken Chess Club podcast, the only chess podcast in the whole world. My name is Jan Gustafsson. It's been a tumultuous week in the chess world. And here to make sense of it all with the fullest transparency possible are Laurent Fresinet and Peter Heine Nielsen. Laurent, okay, how are you today? You look no, happy. I'm not, I'm not that happy. I'm slightly tired, actually. But uh, yeah, I'm fine when I'm talking to you guys. And uh, I mean, you mentioned transparency. So I, I thought you'd start talking, you start saying hi to to Peter. But yeah, my my, uh, my week uh, has been more or less okay. The last few days, not really good. But I got, I went to Reddit, you know. Uh, I discovered the Reddit world <laughs> and I was <laughs> I was getting a lot a lot of comments of course about the, the, the Oh the, I've been the living the on Reddit chess 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 well. candle, yeah, yeah. Uh chess drama, sorry, chess drama. Um so yeah, I discovered a completely new world <laughs> where all kind of uh, theories are um yeah, no, I, I discussed and, and so on. So, um, yeah, I don't know if uh, maybe Peter's uh, week has been more interesting. No, yours sounds great. I started with you because Peter announced he might want to do a five-minute uninterrupted speech. And, of course, we are clearing the floor for him. Peter, how are, how are things over there? Uh, hi, hi, hi. Greetings from Lithuania. Uh, I'm extremely tired today. Um so I can simply not remember the last week. Uh, so I will just uh, explain my last uh, 24 hours, uh, perhaps. That sounds exciting. Please go <laughs> ahead. Yeah, 12 yeah. hours of well, golf. For some, <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. But for some logistic reasons, uh, our normal flat is not um, uh, available. So I'm staying in a hotel with my, my, my eight-year-old uh, next to his school, which is, uh, which is kind of nice. But... Uh, Unlike the, the luxurious hotels I, I'm, I'm, I'm used to in these top chess tournaments, uh, when I pay myself, uh, apparently I'm a bit cheap. So the bets are incredibly narrow for someone uh, of my size. So um, I was not able to sleep until four o'clock. And, and the problem was that um, with a, a son sleeping next to, the only thing I could come up with was what I anyway spent my life on would be to go on Twitter. So I was... Uh, Debating with a Russian bot uh, around four o'clock. Well, to be fair, he was uh, very well informed and very polite, and it was quite interesting. But uh, it's also good news about bots; they never sleep. No, no. Like, anytime I mean, you seemed, feel like debating, no, he was very nice. Right he, he allowed me to get some sleep at some point. But uh, well, it seemed he could go on forever, basically. And uh, well, you can also see that well, it's the kind of guy who who just opened uh, an account uh, like a, a month ago and and follow uh, chess and U.S. politics typically. Uh, but a very polite guy. Uh, and then, of course, also, you know, there was this uh, sudden announcement of a feeder sponsorship, which I didn't know about. I had to Google and such. So it was very, it was very tough. And then uh, I only got like three, four hours of sleep. I had to wake up, take my son to hotel breakfast, which he was very excited about uh, quite reasonably. And then I walked him to school and I had to walk to the flat and, and do some stuff. Then I, well, had to is a bit strong. Could you elaborate why you, you had to walk to the flat? We've, we've been over this. <laughs> yeah, but. I don't know. I mean, it's not so easy to get a taxi these days. And there is a, a lot of traffic. But then, well, had to, I had to. But I decided to top it off with five hours of golf and then some more walking. So I think I have, I'm, I'm allowed to 17 hours, right? 17 kilometers of walk today, I think I've calculated. So... I'm completely gone, to be honest. That's such, more that someone in my weight class can manage. So we have such a high degree of transparency, actually. With yeah, yeah. So that's basically... Well, some more discussions on, on, on Twitter as, uh, as well. So. It's a rough life. I don't know how you find time for anything between Twitter and golf. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, so um, but that's more or less it. And uh, as I said, the rest of the week, I, I don't know uh, exactly. But of course... Uh, <laughs> that's that's your your new position on chess drama. I can't remember the last week. Ah, that's true, actually. That was a lot of, a lot of drama. <laughs> you're like a German politician now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, that uh, that is always a good idea. No, no, I'm very happy to uh, continue not commenting on that. But of course, uh, it seems to a lot of stuff happens every day, and I am soon that sure that you two will take us uh, through every detail of it. Uh, I mean, uh, even with uh, theories about Elon Musk, and uh, yeah, you tell me. Uh, are we going I there? Can't wait. I did it? Oh. Okay, I don't know. Okay, so. <clears throat> no, okay. 
If we want to start with that, that's the theory that annoys me the most. Like, think what you will about chess drama and cheating. But every one of my podcasts of my local sources, they have to go to the darkest place because it's so, so funny. And uh, it really, really annoys me. Of course, that's how the world works. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's unpleasant that chess can only make the <laughs> mainstream culture if we throw in a... It's not even a theory, a joke like that, no? Yeah, I mean, it also made mainstream news in Denmark. And typically we only get, well, either very big chess news like World Championship or this kind of odd stories. So, of course, uh, this one has been picked up uh, a lot. And uh, I have had uh, journalists calling, which I ignore as much as I ignore you guys more or less. So it's been... Uh, well, pretty... Because pretty. <laughs> we keep calling you. Yeah, 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 yeah. They keep calling me. Well, I mean, no, the story is big, as I think also, in case you didn't read my, my Twitter. Um, uh, well, I mean, I was traveling back for St. Louis, right? And, uh, well, of course, I was following it on Twitter, but then I thought, okay, now at least I'm going to get uh, nine hours break. So I sat down in the plane, and the guy next to me sort of asked, so, ah, oh, what were you doing in the, in the States? And I said, well, I'm a chess coach. He said, oh, really? So what do you think about the chess drama? And then... Uh, yeah, I have to talk about that as well, right? So, I mean, uh, no, everybody seems to know. And so, did you tell him, sorry, no comment? I said, I, of course, I told him <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, actually, I'm going to be rude and tell you no, no comments about that, but ask me anything else about chess. And uh, he did that for the next uh, five hours, but it was a pretty pleasant uh, flight. In many ways. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Wow, amazing. Okay. No, no, his so, favorite book was. Uh, from London to Elizabeth. Ah, okay. That's a, no, he was uh, so no. He, he knew something. He was not that that strong a chess player, but he was quite into to chess. History, that's a very good book, so actually. Uh, shoot out yeah, to yeah, our yeah. boy should, uh, Evgeny, Evgeny by F. What excellent book from London to Elizabeth. Yeah, and uh, together with Livy. Yeah, that's right? true. But uh, yeah, you should you should make one long you with you stories. Maybe. We could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Or oh, Jan? Who knows? Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. no. As long as uh, no, but no, that would be no, that would be funny to write a book with Peter when in some chapter he says no comments. <laughs> and, and just, yeah. yeah, I think you have to write with Peter. You you can't talk about the opening or about any of Magnus's thoughts or any behind the scenes stories. But other than that, like ask him anything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is cool. Um, okay, so sure. so back to drama. The the dumbest story is the one that made. Mass media. There's also the second dumbest, in my opinion, which is the story about the leak in Magnus's team. Now, Laurent, if you were to sell Magnus's secrets, <laughs> finally, why would you pick the the white game against Hans yeah. Niemann? Like, uh, why didn't you think the World Championship match no, or that's black against that's Barbie a, so would this be story a appeared. Uh, quite a lot. I was I was really upset when I saw I, I read that theory in a French newspaper, which I like very much. One of my favorite. Okay, it was one of the possible theory, but still, I think it's so <coughs> it's so incredibly uh, dumb. I mean, uh, first of all, I, I mean, I I, I, ne I never got. Uh, I don't know how about you, Peter, but we, we never got a post uh, for for such uh, obviously, and of course, it's a very irrelevant game actually. I mean, it's just um, just one game yeah. in the Sinkerfield Cup round three. Of course, it's a top tournament, but still, uh, it doesn't make any well, sense. And the, the simplest, I will finish with that. The simplest for Magnus would would have been just to fire uh, the leak. I mean, that's as simple as that. Maybe he did. Sorry, my son wants to say hi. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, <laughs> maybe yeah. he did. Well. Uh, well, for a start, history has shown that leaks can also happen by accident, right? I mean, we all remember the 2018 World Championship, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, but uh, I genuinely agree that uh, should one try to maximize financially on selling uh, opening preparation, this is perhaps not the most obvious uh, example. Uh, I can also honestly say that no one has approached me to buy preparation uh, like that. I mean, and I think we spoke a bit about it in Team Vichy, and we all agreed that should they go to someone, they would go to Kazim. Uh, well, at least Kazim <laughs> thought so as well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, and between yeah, but so basically, there is, there both of you are using the defense 
We never sold any secrets because we were never asked. Yeah, that's uh, how I understand this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, but and uh, start the bidding. But uh, I mean, no, but there is a famous anecdote, and I have absolutely no idea if it's true, but um, that during the Cup of Kasparov matches, um, they were both hiring sort of psychologists to, you know, to understand the other player. And uh, as far as I heard from someone, but it's really an anecdote, I have absolutely no, back, no facts to back up with for a change. But that the two psychologists decided, why don't we just swap info? Because then we can both appear, you know, like geniuses toward our employee, and they will give us a raise and stuff like that. So basically, they were just swapping info and uh, helping like that. It sounds too good to be true as, as an anecdote, but uh, well, one could see that happening, right? I mean, if you know. But Potkin wasn't game for the idea during the match. I didn't. Or uh, well, again, uh, I mean, should I? You wanna wanna get me started about Russia, <laughs> or should we take that later? Ah, do... <laughs> oh, sorry, that's uh, a Russian. Yeah. No, but um, just just I want to conclude that, and uh, actually, Peter mentioned the leak okay but they are mentioning a mall i mean in two the articles i mean it could be a hack or, or a mall it's this is the, the theory okay. which you want to talk about hack no i mean could be i mean i <laughs> we can talk about hack as well <laughs> but uh, uh yeah i think it's just uh, i mean the, the mall uh, theory doesn't make uh, any sense uh of course it's easy for me to say that but uh That's what yeah, the mole would say. Yeah, right. yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense. So, so, by the way, Jan, you would go to... Would you rather go ask me or if you would have to, to buy a prep you're, or to not, Peter? Not really. Well, not who would you approach? <laughs> um, <laughs> the honest answer is I know both of you well enough that it yeah. wouldn't make any sense. Laurent has been with Magno since 2013. Peter... Also since 2014. And also financially, it's just a terrible decision. No, I mean, you, you lose that position for, I don't know what the going rate is for selling prep. Like it, it ab makes absolutely no sense either financially or ethically. Also, the team has been, have you of ever course, tight knit have you ever for many years. Any stories? Ah, there is, uh, back well, Kasparov. I did hear the Kasparov Karpov ah, stories plenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but this is Vladimirov. I mean, like but, Kasparov accused uh, Vladimirov, but I don't think he could, he, he could I thought, prove it. I but, okay. <laughs> I thought also what happened then was that there was some kind of, well, or maybe that's referring the book, well, totalizata, but that means, I guess, assume this is a Russian word for betting, right? Um, that basically you could bet on which yeah. kind of opening would be played and things like that. And uh, no, I remember, for instance, in Bonn, I was really telling my team mates that, okay, it's completely unacceptable to bet on the first move because, uh, well, you understand that, um, well, we knew which move which we were going to play and we knew we were going to play 1d4. But the odds on d4 as the first move was 5, and uh, e4 was like 1.2. But if suddenly the odds on 1d4 would start falling, well, people will understand that the market knows something, and then, uh, well, we would start looking at that. So, I mean, uh, that would be a very criminal offense. So, and, so, uh, so, well, so you have to say, your, you, you have to tell your colleagues that it was not okay to bet. Uh, on a match uh, in which you are you are, the, <laughs> the, you are helping one of the player, right? Priceless advice. So yeah, you, you are, you are who could have thought them, of that by themselves? Uh, <laughs> on a very on a very high level, I can see. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so well, before Peter distracts us with another story from the eighties. What is the the status on the drama situation? Like Laurent, I've been also living on red chess, but at some point it gets a little yeah. repetitive. No, no one has anything new, and of course, everyone has no, the thoughts. Most funny, from sorry, sorry, the most okay. funny guy, of course, is uh, as usual, it's Nakamura. Who, of course, uh, the first day he just, I mean, he made a stream where it was clear that uh, <coughs> he thought that something happened. Uh, for sure. And the next day, he started his stream by saying, oh, but come on, I didn't say anything yesterday. I don't know. I have no clue. And so on. That, that was really amazing to me uh, to change because it's clear that the, the previous day, I mean, he was he was clearly uh, accusing uh, Niemann for, for cheating. I mean, that was 100% clear. So, uh, except for, for Naka, who was changing his uh, his mind Uh, uh <laughs> no, may maybe he just thought that he was he had he could have some legal issue. That's it, yeah. So he changed his uh, his position. 
No idea. Didn't follow history much. It looked to me like there were three stages, or maybe now we're in the fourth. First, everybody thought, okay, Magnus, or it's also what I thought, Magnus has to have a reason for what's happening and know something that we don't know. And we still, or I still don't know. Maybe Peter knows, but he won't tell us what Magnus' reasoning or what, what he knows is. And then, yeah, a lot of people ju jumped on that, of course. Then I think we started looking at the game and we had this Catalan theory from Laurent. Then from where I was standing, also there was the second Niemann, Niemann interview. From where I was standing, I couldn't see any reasons for believing and cheating in the Sinkerfield Cup. And it looked to me like the public opinion also turned somewhat after that second interview. And then there was the the Chesscom tweet, which, okay, I don't want to say it wrong. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but the way I understood it was, okay, no, but there's more than the two cheating incidents that Niemann confessed to uh, when he was 12 and 16 years old. And then, yeah, the public opinion, I don't know, uh, from how I felt, changed again a bit to confusion, fusion. And if he cheated online more, then first of all, there was a question, can we trust him? And then secondly, there also, was also the question for people that cheated online, should there be presumed innocence and due process or is it not worth defending them? So everybody, I think, got to this mildly confusing place and I'm still confused because I don't know the answer to that question as I said I couldn't see any reasons for believing in foul play in the Sinkerfield Cup but it's of course very very tricky how much you want to stand up for for guys that cheated online and also can we assume that online cheating makes offline cheating more likely how much more likely all, all these questions were now we're now in the room and yeah people are going through Hans's older tournaments. Of course, many people are positioning themselves. <clears throat> many also asking Magnus to say something about it. And yeah, I think that's the status. I, did I, I, did I, I forget if, anything? No, maybe Kasparov and the organizers? Okay, that's true. Yeah, there was the statement by the Arbiters oh, yeah. that they had no indication for cheating in the tournament, which yeah, is, I think, the conclusion most people came to when, when looking at that as well. Kasparov, what did he say exactly? He said Magnus has to speak up. No, the um, some of the, the ring of power comes some, with big responsibility. Some, something, something like that. Yeah, like that. exactly. And uh, while uh, Rex Sinkerfield was much uh, kinder to everyone as an organizer, so he was kind to to Niemann and to Magnus. He said that Magnus uh, is welcome to to Saint Louis and that it would be delighted to to see him once again. Uh, in uh, playing in uh, one of the tournaments. I, I fully actually agree with you, Jan. I mean, the public opinion uh, changed after uh, this uh, very, very, very well-prepared uh, interview uh, by uh, Niemann. It was clear that uh, he came there and he knew uh, what he was going to say. It was, uh, it was, it was good. Uh, let's, let's face it. And then, from uh, the opinion, if Magnus says a guy uh, uh, is uh, cheating, then he must have some some reason to do so. The public opinion became like uh, uh, poor, uh, poor, poor Niman, uh, uh, unjustly accused of uh, of cheating in that tournament. And uh, it's true that he admitted um, he admitted to have cheated twice on uh, on Chess.com, and then this. Uh, this communique from chess.com uh, came and I regret that uh, I think our, our friend Alejandro uh, I mean I should have asked at some point uh, if he denies these accusations because the previous day he came there and he said okay I cheated on it twice uh, and by the way <laughs> let's let's notice that he caught he, he, he was caught twice so this is kind of uh, bad luck if he only cheated twice but um, uh, then Chess.com is saying something different. I think that uh, the duty of uh, of uh, Ramirez was to was to ask simply uh, to to Niman. I mean, what's 
I don't know what was decided there. I could also um, imagine that at some point they said, okay, he's still playing in the tournament. The more you you make him talk about this during the tournament, of course, we all wanted more 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 gossip the the more distracting it is and he's he's had enough distractions so let him finish the tournament but uh i i, I, I don't agree. know frankly if uh, there was alejandro's call or if they just said, i, I okay, agree with you that during the tournament uh, would have no been idea. tough but uh he had an interview after the last round game so why not uh quite a long interview actually just uh, summarizing summarizing oh, the yes. tournament it was after he saved uh his game against nepo i mean he was doing well, he was basically lost in that game, but then he saved it. So, and then they made a summary about this, tour- this crazy tournament. Let's face it; I mean, it's just, it's just uh, everyone will remember uh, <laughs> that tournament, and not only because Ali Reza won it in a brilliant uh, manner, but uh, <laughs> of we'll, course, we'll get of to course, your French uh, because, Don't uh, worry. Magnus, Magnus left the tournament. So, I think it was just. Uh, no more to ask. Uh, well, instead of that, we saw some. We we forgot. We forgot about. Ah, you forgot to mention the the, the picture where they are all playing tennis, and it's a kind of support uh, to to Hans actually because Hans he, he said that he's staying home. He doesn't hang out uh, with people, and it was prepared again. It was some PR PR stuff that I don't think he likes tennis. Uh, I mean, it's clear that he wanted to show that he has the support of some. Some players, and there it was uh, MVL, um, MVL, and uh, Fabiel. So Ramirez was there. Uh, I don't know where uh, Svidler, one of the commentators. Um, I mean, uh, also uh, nine times or ten times <laughs> Russian champion Peter Paul Borta, our friend. Uh, I don't know who else, but some some people. So they were showing. I mean, the next day, uh, the next day to take such a picture, it's uh, it's a support, and actually. Uh, MVL was very um, was very supportive of uh, of Hans in one of his interview, and he said that in a way, I mean, he trusts Magnus for his uh, judgment, but uh, Magnus should show some some evidence at some point. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I also watched this if it's strictly support for Hans, but it's also support for presumed uh, innocence and sort of uh, due process. No, I think, yeah, he had the position. That seemed very, very understandable. As for the picture, I don't know. It could also be random that there's some rest day activities and whoever was there, Eric Rosen takes a picture, but maybe I'm I'm too naive. Just one last point on that. They should have talked about it after the last round. If I was Hans... Um, I would have said, I don't know if in the interview, or maybe would have said that in the interview or behind the scenes also, okay, there's now these new allegations, evidence that I have to go through, but I had to prepare for my tournament games. I haven't had time. Let me go through it and then, then give an answer or I'm not sure, but you, you could imagine that it's also rough for him to, well, it's, to uh, give that answer it's, uh, while the tournament lines, was ongoing. Uh, I mean, it's very clear. Uh, Chess.com is saying he cheated more than twice on our site. I mean, uh, I mean, like if Chess.com would make uh, <laughs> an accusation on, uh, let's say, one of us, I would say no. We we never cheated uh, online. I mean, it's very simple. You cheated or you didn't cheat. You, if you cheated, then how many times? Uh, maybe he cannot remember. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is very weird. You you can you can give the answer. Nah, usually usually you you can <laughs> yeah. remember. No, yeah, yeah. so I mean, so it was not uh, <laughs> something you have to to prepare for. I mean, to 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 answer that question, it's a very simple question. Did you cheat? Did you cheat more than than twice? And did you lie in that interview? If he doesn't say anything, then it, it, it's very suspect. But of course, if you first uh, admit the two things that are already known that you were, um, I guess, banned for, and then. There's more, but you don't uh, you don't mention that until it comes out. You don't exactly increase your yeah. credibility, you know. Like, and to me, I have to say, I'm not a big expert on these anti-cheating algorithms, but in general, I believe them. It's not uh, not just computer moves, but also your. I'm sure Peter has smarter thoughts on this, but your average deviation from how much a player of your caliber would blunder per move so if whatever computer lose zero zero points per move 
and a human of that level loses, I don't know, zero two, then, I mean, if with a bit of a sample size, you, you okay. can tell. And I'm sure these uh, algorithms are much more sophisticated than that. So generally, I believe it. Of course, the policy has been not to make it public, but to, to ban people. I, and I think if they acknowledge it and promise not to do it again, then they're allowed to come back, as we, I think, mentioned last time. And now is also debated in many a forum. Many such cases of but very, very when, strong players. When they ban someone, don't they make the disclaimer that this is, uh, well, sort of not proof or a juridical allegation of cheating? I thought that I saw that. You don't need a juridical allegation. Every site has terms and conditions yeah. that they can yeah, do yeah. Well, whatever they like. No, like, I mean, <laughs> so Peter was very, very talkative about the subject. But we have, uh, we have something. Uh, you did not, you didn't ask actually. <laughs> Peter, what do you think about the the subject? I think you said it actually pretty well. Uh, it? So, I mean, there's a good, good, uh, good. Summary. So, the, um, yeah, sorry. But maybe I can ask you this: If we know, no matter if it's public or not, that someone cheated online, or we assume someone cheated online, does that make us, or can we transfer that suspicion to offline games, or are those two? Separate worlds. I think that's the question many people are wondering about, me included. I guess it's a statistical question. And uh, again, I don't know. My problem generally with these things is that uh, I always trust uh, people. I mean, I trusted Feller, for instance. I, I didn't think he was cheating, for instance. Uh, it's, uh, I generally believe in good in people. So, uh, I mean... That has been a historical trade with me, so it's very difficult for me to judge uh, such things. Um, I guess that statistically, yes, if someone has cheated online, you would find it more likely he would cheat somewhere else as well. But uh, to which degree, of course, uh, matters a lot, I would guess. Uh, well, of course, also, we don't... But of course, also, if it's public... Know that, or we don't have that many examples for no. it, or maybe I'm just being an idiot, but I don't know of many examples. No, of, also, like, you can argue that if you are a known online cheater... Well, there will be a lot more people observing. I mean, you can create all kinds of stories. And as long as we don't have a yeah. lot of data on it, it's very hard to, to form an informed uh, opinion, in my, in my I opinion. Of... Uh, I say. My opinion is I don't think we can draw that conclusion necessarily. But that's also because online cheating is not considered such a big deal by many people. And I think that's wrong. And that has to change with um, yeah, chess moving more online, the whole world moving more online and all this stuff. You're getting even more serious, even though I I think it was always wrong and it's been happening, this online cheating for at least, I don't know, 23, 24 years ever since we've had internet chess. It's been around. But I think we need to change the perception. Or Well, 98% of players don't need that change. But everyone has to know that there can be consequences for cheating online, that it can be damaging to you. That's just not a thing that can be done. You can't just online play for fun with a computer for some games and then expect it I think not, not to matter. And maybe that's the one good thing. At some thing point, that you, you were the judge in some tournament, right? And you actually disqualified someone where it had some kind of consequences, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> I don't think I was a judge. <laughs> I don't recall. I know what tournament you're... No, no, I know what tournament you're okay. you're talking I about, don't. but uh, I wasn't a judge. Okay, so. I'm, I'm sorry about I that. I don't, um, please. But, uh, okay. I don't want to tell me. This no, is no, not no. transparency. Okay. No, the thing is, like, with these... Um, I know what Peter Peter is talking about. It wasn't me, but I think the all the sites that had this policy to keep this okay. more or less private, okay. I think would be strange okay, to okay, name okay. random okay. names. I know of many people that have allegedly... Cheated online, and uh, I'm sure on Reddit chess or somewhere yeah, else you yeah, yeah. you can find bigger and bigger. Oh, no, my lists. apologies. I thought it was public. Then I'm really yeah. Wrong. And I saw, uh, I saw, I saw we saw a lot of, of theories on on Reddit, and also we saw some uh, some guys actually uh, uh, online guys or streamers uh, starting some investigation of some old games of uh, of hands. I watched uh, some of them. One we had a disagreement uh, pre-show with that would not surprise you with Peter. Uh, I thought it was very unimpressive. It was a Fidem master from Ukraine. I can't put, put so, so, I, I can't remember his name, but no, I thought it was I, very Punin. He Punin? Was, take, 
No, I'm not saying that uh, he's uh, right. I just thought that, uh, well, it's an interesting way of gathering data and it's some uh, some great uh, games. Uh, there's no doubt about that. It was I mean, fragment. Uh, so, okay. yeah, yeah, it was fragment of games, but I, I'm not, I haven't sat and started them. It's also, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't have a good grip of uh, Niemann as a player. I haven't started him. I mean, well, for instance, uh, let's take a random player and say Giri. I mean, him, obviously, I know because Magnus has played him a bunch of times. We prepared a bunch of times. I know how he plays. Um, with Niemann, it's new. It's hard to judge uh, the games from Charlotte to see if this is his natural style or not. Uh, but there is some spectacular moves uh, at times, no, no doubt about that. Some spectacular piece of calculations. But uh, I simply, well, I mean... But once again, if you take... Uh, I haven't looked at these games in detail, but in general, we think it's fair game to to speculate about all that. Yeah, like... <laughs> Because if you take any Grandmaster's games, uh, even I played some games where I made all computer moves. Yeah. Like it sometimes happens, no? Like, yes. <laughs> and then it depends on what sample size you look at. But uh, some good moves, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. But yeah, <clears throat> I don't. I don't want to. I haven't sat down and be overly de- de- big on defending on defending Hans. I'm just questioning if that one case we can now yeah, yeah. drag his whole life and <laughs> every game of his out when we're not doing it in the Literally, hundreds of other cases that might not be public. No, but, but the main problem it. in this issue is that, that he mentioned uh, Niemann in his interview, and I think he was right, that everyone has an opinion. I mean, like, uh, you know nothing about chess, you know a lot about chess, you know something about technology, you don't know anything about technology, what is possible, what is not possible. Uh, everyone has an expert opinion. So, I mean, yeah, this is just crazy, actually. Uh, huh. So do we know, and it's not just a... Playing strength opinion, no, because if you look at the Sinkerfield Cup participants, um, from I think you could gather some idea on where they stood on on the issue. Yeah, so it's not like you can you can have this one authority on topics well, that you trust because of rating or whatever. No, like, I, of course you can trust. I us. would rather say that me. I thought everybody has an opinion, but very few has an expert mm-hmm. opinion. I mean, uh, it feels more like people are making up the opinion on the fly, and it's a subject we don't know much about. I mean, well, I mean, we might end up talking about Musk again, but how to even, if it's possible technically, is a different story. I don't, uh, well, I don't feel people seem to be incredibly well informed about what's possible or not. And, uh, well, statistical analysis, some are very impressed, some thinks it's nonsense. I mean, well, you can see it's not, it's not like we have the methodology ready and things like that. That's how I see it, at least. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a good idea, even if we knew, which I don't, to have that many debates about the best methods to to cheat in over the board chess and the best best counters against them and so on. But yeah, I think we we don't have that much new to contribute. On the topic right now, of course, we can keep positioning ourselves. For me, as I mentioned, from what I've seen, heard, read, looked at, mm. I see no reasons for believing there was foul play in the Sinkfield Cup. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, let's let's uh, talk about something more uh, more positive, and uh, Ali Reza's <laughs> performance in uh, Sinkfield. So he won. The- He won the tournament Allez. and uh, won the whole thing, the Grand Chess Tour. Amazing. Actually, I, di- I don't think he plays that well. Uh, but he showed... You don't think that game against Wesley was <laughs> no. smooth from start to finish? <laughs> no, finish? actually, he was busted yeah, against Wesley. Good good point. This is Thailand, but he, he sh- What about against Mamed Yar? Mame- well, yeah, but I mean... <laughs> uh, he missed Bishop F2, yeah? No, there were a lot of hiccups, I mean, he but he was, still he was through, fighting like, uh, <laughs> like a lion. Yeah. Every game, so a bit in Ma- Magnus style. I mean, uh, Magnus was not there, but uh, still his style was there. I mean, like even in not such a great shape, he's fighting and scoring points, and uh, yeah. Uh, so that was that was very good for him. But he's always fighting, yeah, no? And the true. candidates, the one criticism was maybe that he was fighting too much, no? Yeah. But that's so he did uh, he did very well, and uh, yeah, we have. It's good for him after the candidates uh, to have this this month in uh, in San Luis. I mean, of course, it's a it's a great recovery. So um, 
I don't know. <coughs> Maybe Peter, you can you can you can comment on uh, Aliaza's performance. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, when I was there, it was not that impressive. I mean, but then you're right. It somehow he he notched up a couple of wins and and he got there. I mean, it's not my impression that from a chess perspective, it's one of his better tournaments. But also and that we know with Magnus, if you want to be the best or one of the best, it's important that you can actually win when you don't really have everything working for you. And uh, I agree with you. He was fighting very hard. But, well, I have a question sort of for you, uh, Laurent. I mean, um, is it because he's French you like him so much? Or no, actually, I'm very, I'm very, very, very yes. Uh, yes. I, I, I like Talia as a, if you remember, uh, we had a training camp uh, with with Magnus, I remember, you, yeah, we had two actually. Uh, Aliaza and myself. I think I'm not missing anyone. Um, Ayantai. Ayantai was there as well. You think the first? We, uh, how many camps? Did, okay, wh- whatever. Ah, yeah, Ayan was there maybe as well. So, uh, yeah, and Aliaza, I like, yeah, I mean, I think he has a uh, huge talent as Magnus. Uh, uh, does oh, <laughs> obviously, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, no, but <laughs> I have a bit more, you know, like, um, stylistically, I prefer uh, Magnus and Aliaza to, to MVL. I mean, clearly, because MVL, I can see, wow. I mean, wow. he's very tactical, he's just wow. a genius when it comes to tactical, sharp, unrational position, which I, I cannot see, uh, which I mean, I cannot, I hate to play actually, we all hate to, to play such position, but he just like. I thought that was your only skill. No, no. I mean, <laughs> that's just a, how and you but me. with okay. MVL, I think all of us can see uh, clear weaknesses. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very obvious his, his weaknesses. And uh, while for Aliaza and Magnus, for me, it's very very difficult to judge. I mean, uh, uh, you would ask me. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, what can I say about Magnus? I mean, I mean, the only game he lost in a World Championship match was against Kayakin. It was basically. Uh, I mean, I know he lost two games. He lost one, one with Vichy uh, in the second match, but I mean, he lost uh, because of himself. I mean, not because Kayakin did something extraordinary. I mean, so, so. Just to clarify, when asked if you like Ali Reza better since he's French, your answer is Ali Reza is a very talented player <laughs> and Magnus is also very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I have some. Yeah. I mean, I can have. No. No, I don't like him more because he's French. No, <laughs> always admire him. So let's say, should he change the United States, you will still be a fan. Of course. Okay. Of course. Good. Yeah. Ah, that was the question. Yeah. Remember. So you think he's going to change to no, no. US? Did you hear something? I was worried. I I saw a tweet. <laughs> Which tweet did you see? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Is he going to kick out Sam Shanklin from the US national team? I don't know, actually. Well, well that would be... Sam is there if Nakamura doesn't play, right? Or, but also, again, now, you are, are you having a dig at Hans? Or how does it work? No, not at all. Uh, I didn't think of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, so, I mean... No, I, I don't know. Uh, it was basically... I think someone joked about it. I think maybe... Maybe was it... Uh, was it the mayor who said that he could stay as long as he want in St. Louis or something like that? I forgot what the quote was, but there was something. And, uh, it's a great pity that the listeners can't see Laurent's eyes. There's genuine yeah, worry yeah. and sorrow yeah, yeah. in his no, eyes. No, it's yeah. funny, Jan, that you complained that uh, I was not answering Peter's questions. Actually, yeah, Peter was asking a question, I mean, which was a complete fake because he never asked me any questions. I mean, no, of course. But, I mean, he, and actually, he's never answering our questions. Uh, I mean, it's, so he doing the same and then you are taking his side which was which was very painful <laughs> to me and uh, uh, no, I apologize yeah. but you, you know I usually just jump on opportunities to mock no, but but what, what do you side. want me to say that <coughs> I prefer that Aliaza uh, stay in France and represent France of course I mean who, who, who wouldn't like to have uh, Aliaza in his country okay we can make it more complicated <laughs> would you prefer Aliaza staying in France but Continue not to play for the Olympia for, for the national team. I think, or uh, him changing. That would be jackpot. No, then Luan keeps <laughs> no. his spot. <laughs> no, I'm really, I'm really uh, yeah, for Aliaza yeah. to be in the team. <laughs> so uh, I would rather Aliaza uh, stay in France and play for France, and and I would rather uh, Aliaza stay in France and never play for the national team. It's, I mean, even if he's, I mean, it's just great to have him as um, as a champion. 
Anyway, to be more more serious, does this tournament reflect that uh, Ali Reza is like, let's say, a top four player? That uh, actually those predicting he could win the candidates were right. He just had a bad event. Or do you see it differently? I mean, well... I can't see it from the games. Of course, the fighting spirit yeah. is admirable, but it's such a weird event overshadowed yeah. by so many things. And against Mohamed Yarov, he misses this bishop, takes f2. And then Mohamed Yarov makes three horrible moves in a row, uh -huh. goes to lose that game. Against Wesley, he's dead lost after 15 moves with White. And Wesley yeah. um, goes crazy. Of course, he fights excellently and he sees so many things. No one disagrees what a prodigy he is. But I can't see him being a top four player yeah. from these last no, no. couple of games there. Even the game against Levon, for which I think he won the beauty prize. There's also, there's also many... For me, it's much more impressive less than, let's say... Um, I mean, Kawana in that form, uh, MVL, Mamediaov, Aonian. For me, it's, just, it's no match uh, between between them and Aliaza. But maybe, maybe I could, I could be, I could be wrong. But I think he's clearly, uh, he's clearly. But he's also 19. Yeah, I mean, we talk about uh, Eric Aisi and Hans as these yeah. mm -hmm. these newcomers, these these kids. They're exactly the same age like Ali Reza. He's just been. Yeah. Around the top a little longer. Yeah. So and usually people don't pick at 19 yet. When he's 23, I think it's very, very hard to bet against him. Being yeah, a, he was. And he, he, yeah. At the very least, a top two, three player, if not a dominant force. No, player, again, in, this, in the tie break, uh, Irso was, was much better than uh, for keeping his nerves. And than Nepo was tilted, but yeah, because he missed this game against uh, Neiman. But also Nepo, I mean, we, one shouldn't forget that he was, he was, in a way, uh, I will use the word lucky, but it's not uh, lucky that Magnus uh, um, went out of the tournament because he lost in the very first game. So obviously it was good uh, for his number of points because he had zero out of uh, one against Magnus. And then the, the game was, the games against Magnus was just uh, annulled because he didn't play half of the games. So, um, yeah, no, Aliaza was kind of, uh, yeah. yeah, he was not playing at his best, as Peter said, but still, uh, that was uh, amazing performance. And considering it's no, happened I'm, a bit I'm, before, I'm, that's just, uh, <laughs> the overall picture is just amazing. No, it's for me, I can still not grasp his level. And, uh, well, it seems like Jan, you can't neither, right? I mean, you still have, for you, there is no verification. He's a top three player in the world, right? I mean, uh, he, he could be, but, uh, I mean, it's not that stable. It's, at times, it's not that, well, the fighting spirit is there, but the games are not that great, perhaps. So that was what you were saying. No, as I said, he's 19. Yeah, yeah. The results are already there in the Rapid and Blitz. We we'll see mm -hmm. how it is in the but. in the next classical games. From these ones, this, this tournament was overshadowed by so much yeah, stuff. It's a, but he also kept his cool, and he was one of the few who kept fighting in every game as well. Yes, yeah? so nothing but praise for him. Also made some money. You no, know? like uh, I, I saw he made two hundred fifty thousand dollars in the last month alone in prize money. It's not bad. Oh, yeah, he mm -hmm. won uh, both tournaments and he won the tour at the same time, right? He ca yeah. cashed three first yeah. prizes. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. it's not a bad, oh, yeah, it's I mean, not a bad payday. But can you, oh, uh, okay, so you have a question about Aliaza. So about Nepo, except, okay, of course, he played brilliantly in both candidates, uh, the last one, but except from that, I mean, can you, I mean, the, in the, in his other tournaments, including the match, I mean, can you say he's top three or even close to that? I mean, it's always very, you know, uh, uh, no, no one is incredibly stable. Well, who is top three? Magnus. Let's let's name the top three. It's probably Ding. Magnus. Then who else? Magnus and That's Ding sure. are one and two. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then the question is, who's number well, three? I don't know. Mag Ding is clearly two or three. But uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, Nepo, why, why you would be? I mean, like, except the candidates. Oh, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, there's amazing performance to win back-to-back -back candidates. I mean, no, I don't. Want to no, I I used to think that it was so obviously Kaurana and Ding. But of course, Kaurana had a pretty bad spell. So, and uh, no, in our mind, it's uh, it's still Fabi. But if you just look at results, yeah, yeah, I mean, what he fell out of the top ten recently. No, no, he it, lost to uh, I, I, Gukesh up to Satorov in the in the Olympiad, yeah. the second half of candidates. But I agree, like when <coughs> when you had to bet on the candidates being played in six months, 
I'd make the same mistake and I still think, I think Ding and Caruana are the favorites. I would do the same. If, let's say, Caruana was a stock, I would buy it because it's low at the moment. But, uh, well, it's also, you know, I keep saying that there is not enough to verify that uh, Ali Reza is a top three player. You could argue, well, there seems to be enough to verify that Caruana is not. And, uh, well, I mean, maybe they, I'm just slow updating my algorithm. Right? Yeah, the, the actually, rating list, yeah. and I'm checking the rating list, but Nepo is number, number three. We're, we're forgetting about, actually, number four is Ali Reza. So if he, and uh, Wesley is number number five. Where's yeah, Wesley, no, but, the uh, real Wesley, MVP? Wesley, it's a yeah. pity. I mean, like, it's clear that against Alireza, he just wanted to make a draw, I mean, he said in the post-game. And he's... Ma- but I have him win that position, this plus three position, and he probably wins the tournament. And the debate is completely different. Yeah, but and he yeah, was he playing for a draw. It's clear that he wanted to, to take zero risk, and he had to, I mean, kill the game. He was, he was winning against uh, Alireza. But again, um, it's pity. It's pity because he's, I think he would be, I mean, he's very close to, to top three and, uh, he deserves it. But sometimes he's chickening out and, uh, calculating too much, uh, about his risk and so on. And that's, that's a great pity. Yeah, but that's also part of it. I mean, well, you can talk all you want about his uh, great potential, but you think he will ever sort of fulfill it and be top three? Top three, yes. He was top. top he was number two. Uh, once again, uh, top three. He was already no. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but sort of. Uh, but also, I think history teaches us normally, especially at that age, you are who you are. No, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm his biggest fan. But of course, the whatever you want to call it, the psychological weaknesses, or maybe getting nervous then. In these spots, I mean, he didn't he didn't force a draw from that winning position. He just lost yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's different than just being force. chicken. That's also nervous. That's why his biggest fan, with all due respect, is might be not the best news for him. <laughs> wow, that was half. No, that's still Wesley. <laughs> don't, don't let them get between us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so yeah, congrats to Ali Reza. Other than that, yeah, I think the tournament was so overshadowed by all the talk and to what happened in round three uh, and so on and so forth. There were a bunch of quick draws and uh, overall it seemed everyone was distracted for, I guess, good reason. Rustam was arguing, Rustam Kazmchanov, with whom I did commentary, that they aren't really distracted, they don't care. But I think it's hard not to be distracted by that environment and everything going on. No, I, I would assume so. I mean, they read social media. I mean, well, they also asked. I mean, it's getting more and more difficult to stay in a bubble. I remember maybe 2008 World Championship match. We were sort of, well, Vichy was telling us, I mean, please don't tell me anything you read on the internet. Uh, and at the press conference, he would just ignore questions. But I think these days, it's getting more and more difficult. I mean, uh, well, you can see they're doing post-games interview. They are asked opinion about it and everybody seems to, to know. Uh, so I think, uh, I mean, it must affect uh, everybody. And uh, well, maybe during the game, you sit there and think for a good good one-liner at the press conference, right? Or is it, is it only me? But uh, Well, I don't play anymore. But it's crucial, yeah. So, I mean, of course it's going to take some mental space. Uh, I, I, it would be hard. Uh, it would be strange if not, in my opinion. Yeah, agreed. We tournament. Next tournament is, of course, the Champions Chess Tour. And both Carlsen and Niemann in the field, no? Scheduled to play on on Monday? What's that? Just a savvy business decision? Because it will probably... Get some viewers. Can we imply anything just, from that? Uh, weird. Uh, I mean, I have no explanation uh, on that. Uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, so, Peter, <laughs> back to you, Peter. <laughs> Please <Hi>. tell us. <laughs> tell us, Peter. Well, Transparency. I have, uh, I have no clue. I have also. I mean, it's my job to be involved in preparing. So I have seen the pairings, and uh, well, I mean. I guess uh, if no one has uh, withdrawn, then uh, the, the previous deal stands, as far as I understand. Right? So you should so, ah, mean, actually well, maybe you shouldn't prepare. Uh, uh, any, anyway, Hans is guessing the, the opening, so you shouldn't. You should argue that you, you it's stupid to prepare against Hans against Niemann. 
ah, well, I'm happy not to work. So I, I, I don't, you'll have to explain it to me better if I have to sort of convey it to Magnus. But uh, but judging from that game in the Sinkerfield Cup, it looked like that strategy didn't work so no. well for you guys last time. No, maybe you should prepare this. No, I think Magnus at some point said that, uh, well, that we had this thing that uh, if I surprise my seconds, uh, it's a good sign because then I will also surprise my opening uh, opponents. But uh, it doesn't no. always work, I would guess, right? But uh, that's, that's assuming the one leaked it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's true. Surprise it's true. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Uh, but uh, no, it starts Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah. I have to get back to 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 work. I have to get in some golf yeah. in between. So. Oof! Is that gonna uh, hurt your golf or your Twitter time? Yeah. Which oh. one will suffer? No, that's what people doesn't understand. They think that <laughs> I should stop tweeting and work instead. But the, oh, we get the story again about the computer ex- running. Ex- while you're exactly, exactly. No, golf no, this, uh, <laughs> Come on. no, we know better. No, 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 it's the same. I mean, when you analyze chess, I mean, it fits extremely well with tweeting because, uh, well, you know, you have a position you want the an- computer to analyze for uh, a minute, but if you just stare at it, you're gonna interrupt it after eight seconds. Yeah. So if you fire a tweet, I think it gets enough time to and you are giving to find away conclusion. So. In general, the rule of thumb is the the more other stuff you do on the side, you're, the better your work is. Yeah, I think that's uh, there is uh, there is uh, empirical you, you evidence. You are just giving that away up. once heard, again that you have a very weak computer, but yeah, that's uh, that's fair. You have to wait one <laughs> wow. minute to get wow. to depth twenty two, which is amazing. <laughs> it's a, it's a quad core. Yeah, yeah. How dare you? Wow. <laughs> I think you're right, actually. Yeah, but, but quad uh, core, but for 40 kilos. No? So, I mean, it kind of compensates. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's called quad core. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, okay. Well, sure. Okay, before we clear the room for oh, Peter oh to talk about FIDE in Russia, I want to give a shout out to my boy Vincent Keimer. Oh. He broke 2,700, started with six and a half out of seven in the Polish league. Then, unfortunately, last, lost the last two games, but he's still above 2,700 in the live rating list, while Hans Niemann is not. So, in the junior list, I think it's Keimer number 52700. Let me look it up. Dot three. And Niemann is 2698.8. So, great yeah, job by Keimer. Be... And the junior list, yeah, Firuja, Erigaisi, Gukesh, Abdus Satarov, Keimer, Niemann, Pragnanda, Yesipenko, Sarin. Yakuboyev. Yeah, I checked, I checked his who? games actually yeah. very carefully of uh, Kema because you told me, Jan, that uh, he became he improved a lot uh, in the Olympiad and that, yeah. I was very impressed and sitting that, next to him at the Olympiad, like unplugged. Yeah. Sometimes you get a better feel for how yeah, much I checked he sees his games yeah, from this league, I was very and, uh, Yeah, uh, very, very strong player. All this, all this work with an, Lekotov, Mr. Lekotov. Would actually be an, uh, uh, yeah, pay, he's paying. He's paying off now, and uh, yeah, it's clear that he's even uh, stronger than twenty seven hundred, even now. So he will go. He will go up even even more. That's for sure. Will be fun once all these kids start yeah. hitting the top tournaments. No, nothing against the current top players, but we've had ten yeah. years of them playing each other. Some fresh blood <coughs> in there will be fun. Well, two two things from me. First, I mean, having let's say a world junior uh, with uh, just the top ten players, the top twelve players playing all play all would actually be an amazing yeah. event yeah, with this cool. kind of strength there is right now. So that that doesn't work mathematically because they all win twenty points <laughs> per tournament. So they can't only they can't all play each <laughs> okay, other. Doesn't fair enough. enough. Uh, yeah, I okay. Uh, <laughs> leaving that aside. Uh, um, well, maybe you're not the right to, uh, to ask, Jan, but anyhow, you are the German national team coach. But how do you see sort of um, Kamer's mental attitude? Is he ambitious enough? You see, sometimes, well, he looks like a, he seems, uh, I mean, I've met him. He's an incredibly nice guy, but uh, is that good? No, I think he's very ambitious. He's also optimistic, which Germans aren't wow. <laughs> known for. But I think you're just thinking because, yeah. Of the way Germans normally play chess and maybe working with Leko, you get the wrong person. <laughs> very confident, very optimistic, incredibly ambitious. And I think all of these guys are like this new generation or I don't know them that much one by one. But it's a little different even from the current top players that they're all very, very fighting, ambitious fighting. and confident. I read this Gukesh interview. Yeah, fighting. <laughs> Gukesh interview in New and Chess. This guy Gukesh is only 16 still. Yeah, that's also sick. But he, he's 16, and he's so much wiser than us 
already and he's so aware of all the mental stuff and the nervousness and the approach like it's incredibly impressive so no i'm a big fan but to answer your question yeah i think that's not Keimer's problem at all i think he's very confident very fighting very ambitious uh, so do you think um gukesh is more uh let's say as more a bite of futures and let's say irrigazy or one years of the old, now I start to think really that after the Olympiad, of course, he was very impressive in the Olympiad, but now uh, I heard before that Gukesh was incredibly strong and now I <laughs> check his games yeah, as well. And wow, that's so impressive. So I don't know. Yeah, it's not that easy to score eight out of eight <laughs> in the first games, uh, first eight games on the Olympiad on the top board playing the top yeah. teams. <laughs> we can we can try at some point, but I'm not sure we'd manage. <laughs> Um, no, I don't know. It's so hard to say. I'm, I haven't checked their games enough to have a qualified opinion. I think Eric Gaisi, he's considered to be more well-rounded, maybe more, slightly more, more solid. And Gukesh is more like yeah, trying to win every game, a maximalist. But what that means for future results, I don't know. We also had, I don't know. Topalov and Kramnik were, were both good, right? With different approaches. I'm not sure one can predict ratings and so on from it. I think it's a safe prediction. We will see many of these guys, because also Abdus Satorov, Pragnalanda, well, the names on this list in future Super Tones will be fun. Yeah, no, uh, no, yeah, yeah, let's see. Gukesh is a bit younger, though. So, so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. He's 16. Idea. That's I, a little different. I'm confusing. Uh, that and level Kamer at 16. Is, what, 18, 19? I think it just... I mean, he might still wow. be 17, or maybe he's just turned 18, oh, like he's sick. turning 18. Yeah. Okay. So it's time. The embarrassing thing for me is that I actually don't really have a clue. I mean, uh, I haven't studied their games. I mainly study openings. Uh, I have an idea about the guy's Magnus play. He doesn't play them regularly. It's uh, it's embarrassing. But, uh, well, that will change. That yeah, exactly. I will have mm -hmm. to do it at some point, but it's also... This feeling about how an opponent should be played and such. I mean, Magnus is uh, so much uh, better than me in, in, in doing it. So I don't really spend time. I just listen to what he, he says. And then I try to, you know, analyze the opening. So, uh, no, I mean, well, I know the names, but I can... <laughs> I can actually not really you know, of, uh, you know, say you know anything. The names of all 2,700 guys. <laughs> all the names? Really? No, you are bluffing. No, come no, on. No, no well, come that, on. That would be a fun quiz we could try <laughs> yeah, it right now. No, no, I have no clue. <laughs> no, it was also interesting. I got a bit of a feel for it during the Olympia with these these young people. That we live in a completely different world. They're, like, they are completely aware of who played what against whom online and oh there's that game in in that chess com match against that guy and they're incredibly aware of the of the last two games of pretty much every game that's been played uh, online online offline so it's a world we're really not following that much and yeah Rostam kept saying they they don't know who Ivanchuk is. Maybe that's an exaggeration. <laughs> no. But it's also in, in a way normal no the generation before you that or you could argue, who's what generation? They don't know that much about it, but they know I, well so much about I, games. Uh, random people played online under that nickname against that guy and so on. That I, really I know it from Denmark cool. that uh, my generation, we all adored Lars and we read everything. He was our big idol. But generations after us didn't seem to care much. They hadn't read his... Uh, you know, games collections, which are excellent and such. They were playing uh, Blitz Online and doing all kind of other stuff uh, that seems to work for them. No, it's I, I, you're right. We we might live in a parallel uh, world to, to quite an extent. For sure. And um, um, no, I, I can't say I don't spend uh, time on social media, but uh, these things I actually don't really, <laughs> <laughs> really, really. I think you might research <laughs> yeah, yeah. other stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Title Tuesday game. Exactly. So uh, I... I, I get your point. And, well, we were brought up with uh, spending time like that was not the right way to become a strong chess player. But uh, that seems to be wrong. I mean, well, one thing that struck me with Niemann is that um, I don't really understand fully how he thinks and understands a chess position. And um, that reminds me a bit of uh, Jordan van Forest. It was very interesting to be part of having him in the team. And... Uh, 
well, I can see that he generates good uh, ideas and he plays good games. But I can't really sort of fully understand how he thinks. We think differently. We are different generations. We we are taught chess differently, and we, I mean, we just have very different intuition. Uh, I don't know you what you think. Your we have the is. same intuition, Peter. <laughs> no, but I mean, you I can understand. You I mean, understand. well, I think that you are basically st- st- you're the conjurer <laughs> of cheap tricks. <laughs> exactly, you're staring at my king, or you're trying to make a threat that you hope I don't see, and uh, yeah, but sometimes you are hyped it works. By, by uh, but uh, <laughs> I mean, not in in the games. I mean, like yeah, well, yeah, ex- when when I I'm not saying it's okay. Well, that was, that was <laughs> quite a quite, quite a Careful quite, an, Careful <laughs> quite an accusation, I think, but. Um, uh, sort of no I mean well for instance Magnus's game I can obviously not play like him but I have a feeling of the moves he would play and uh, you know because you have the computer things like that uh, <laughs> no no of course I need the computer to help me but even at times when there is various computers move I think I have a, a decent guess as what he would uh, choose but of course I need a computer to help me because uh, well I mean I cannot uh, calculate at uh, a tenth of the speed he can and his uh, judgment of course is much better I mean I need uh, something artificial to help actually, me actually right? you, you mentioned but, um, um, uh, we mentioned Kamer we mentioned uh, Ivan Shug maybe he doesn't know uh, they, they don't know Ivan Shug but actually uh, <coughs> what makes the uh, next tournament interesting we were a bit discussing this uh, uh, Niemann and Carlsen playing in the same tournament, but there is also Ivan Schuk and Gelfand playing with uh, Kamer, Eric Gazi. So this will make it fun. I mean, if they don't know uh, who is Ivan Schuk, they, they will, they will uh, find out. Uh, of course, we are, I think, as old guys, we are voting fully for Chucky and, and boys. Yeah? I, I am, actually. I, yeah. I think they will have a That's tough time. time. No, yeah. I think these these kids... I think the generation battle we need is having them play against Ding, Magnus, Fabi. Like, <laughs> I think they're ready for that. But it's going to be interesting to see, nonetheless. Leko is also playing. No, ah, no, Leko it will be playing? great fun, like having the legends no, against Leko's the kid. I think so, no? He's commentating. Ah, no, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> he's he's playing, playing something. <laughs> yeah. Just don't come global champion. Ah, maybe? yeah. He's playing the chess. One of those global he's global playing. Yeah, I'm not sure which one was. Next, uh, uh, the next uh, uh, generation okay. cup on uh, on chess twenty four <laughs> on chess <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> as long as, the, uh, as it is just given I um, so yeah that will be that it's it, it starts so- Sunday right just for my well I'm so, sorry for asking private yeah, it's questions for your work. I hope it's okay uh, yeah it does start Sunday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we don't care actually <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we'll we'll f- yeah. follow it for sure. So it's time for it's the the the, All right. the, the, the time where where everyone should uh, switch off the podcast, right? Yeah. I need to go to the bathroom. So Peter, can you debate Fide, Sutovsky, Ivan Sokolov, what Russians are on what pictures with other Russians or non-Russians for a while? For sure. <laughs> I hope I didn't take any of the no, topics. No, no, I can't believe you, you mentioned so many that I managed to forget them in the, in, in the meantime. Okay. But, uh, well, we can take the... Okay, you actually... No, no, I'm not checking out. Okay. Uh, Jan is checking out. <laughs> Jan is leaving. Out. It's okay. It's okay. You can go, Jan. Yeah, yeah. You can go, Jan. No, I mean, well, the first thing was just Sokolov, uh, sort of kind of right. I mean, Sokolov, who is, uh, you know, perhaps the most hot coach at the moment, just... Uh, Winning the Olympiad together with the Uzbek team had a sort of uh, somewhat cryptic ch- uh, tweet where he just said that, uh, well, this is the last time he will have anything to do with uh, FIDE. And maybe I forgot which kind of criticism there was uh, in that. But he was basically in, uh, in Mamaya in Romania and was doing lectures there, which were quite praised. But uh, something seems to have really upset him. And uh, I mean, Sokolov is not one that complains easily, but when he do, he do it uh, quite uh, thoroughly. But uh, there was no transparency on on why, and uh, we will see. But that he actually yeah, I said, saw, I saw right? on social media. Yeah, that's so. <coughs> uh-huh. But um, well, as Jan is not still here, we can move to, on to what to what has I mean, Sutovsky has done this week, please. What has Sutovsky exactly, what has Sutovsky done? Well, Sutovsky has. Uh, announced uh, a new sponsor for FIDE. It's the German company, which is perhaps why 
Mr. Jan Gustafsson uh, left, so, so we don't get his expert opinion. One, one, a... one question. Uh, yeah. Was it announced on his Twitter or on Fide Twitter? I think both, and uh, probably a few minutes earlier on, uh, okay. on the official, after my numerous complaints, okay. uh, I, I would guess. But, um, well, there's a new, new feed sponsor, which is called the We Are or WR Group. Um, and they are going to sponsor some kind of team championship. But, uh, I mean, as usual, I didn't uh, care about which actual event they were going to sponsor. I was more into some of the other implications. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. But, well, they're going to have some kind of team event where they're basically saying that uh, normal people uh, can actually get to, to play events with the, the biggest stars in a team kind of uh, thing. And it's going to happen, as far as I understand, in, in Dusseldorf to... Dates still to be announced, uh, but of course fitting uh, the general schedule. Uh, Sutovsky also announced that the World Teams Championship is going to uh, happen in uh, in Israel yeah. later in the year. But um, uh, well, that I also replied critically to. But let's it, stick it to was the it was VR already group. planned uh, in uh, in April, but then it was cancelled. It was planned in April and then it was moved. Yeah. And uh, well, part of the reason was the. The, the yeah. Russian invasion in uh, in, in Ukraine, and that uh, it had implications for for the teams. I mean, for instance, uh, both uh, Russia and Ukraine was uh, qualified yeah. to 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 play. France is qualified as well. And, That's why uh, I know so much. I was supposed to go there actually. Uh huh. But yeah, whatever. Okay. <coughs> you are gonna play this uh, yes. in, in Israel, or you don't know? Yes. You yes. are. Okay, it's Ali Reza and... I don't I know. I mean, when I say uh, you are, it's France is going to play. If I'm ah, personally France, going okay, to play, if I'm invited, I will I will most likely going to play. I don't know if Ali Reza and, uh, and, and Maxima. Ah, okay, okay. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but, uh, well, that will actually be interesting that you will have a chance to play. And I'm sorry, Jan, we ended uh, up talking about chess, but we can go on. Well, we are debating this uh, German company that's sponsoring FIDE. Uh, is it a company you heard about before that we are WR Group? <laughs> Sorry, what's it no. called? We are WR? No, WR Group. No, but I, I'm i not an expert on German transport companies and okay. transporting stuff to Russia, so no, uh -huh. I wasn't okay. aware. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, but obviously, me and... Uh, Mr. Sotowski didn't need long to get into a fist fight over, over that one. And, uh, well, my argument is that, well, FIDE has promised that we should sort of, uh, I don't know, distance ourselves to, to Russian uh, money. And, uh, well, the question is, is this distancing ourselves to that? Or, and my answer is, no, it's not. It's, it's on the contrary. It's a company that has uh, obvious ties to, 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 um, To Russia, uh, well, you can if you want the Sotovsky's counter arguments, you can you can go and have a look at them. But I mean, the, the latest development I haven't been on Twitter for the last uh, two minutes, so I can't uh, say I'm fully updated. But um, is that well? I mean, the, the the CEO of the company actually seemed to hang out with Kayakin in in in, in May, and this is at a point where Kayakin was actually banned from FIDE for, I mean, for his uh, comments about the, the, the invasion in, in Ukraine and for supporting the Russian tr troops, right? So for me, it's strange that, well, we have someone who has uh, businesses in Russia, who has um, quite recently, uh, less than a year ago, been to Ross Congress, which is um, a big uh, sort of Russian conference uh, headed by Vladimir Putin. Putin was speaking there, Dvorkovich was speaking there, and so was the head of the sponsor. And also someone who is organizing, uh, helping organizing chess tournaments uh, together with the Russian Chess Federation in Moscow. And he's playing Blitz there with Kayakin. Um, and uh, my hunch is that either you lost me or I don't know how it is. Okay, we're back. We got very sadly interrupted at the, the most exciting moment for everybody when Peter was explaining the ties of that German um, transport company to to Russia and the new feeder sponsors. Unfortunately, now we've had some technical hiccup and we lost some time coming back. So we won't have time to cover everything that happened there and that's been going on with FIDE this week. Maybe Peter can fill us in very quickly and we get to chicken of the week. Of the week. Uh, 
Sure. Uh, there is uh, uh, a new sponsor. Sutovsky says no connections to, or very few connections to Russia. I say not true. Uh, and uh, we have found out that there is pictures of new sponsor and the uh, kayaking playing blitz and that they have been trying to delete them. So we have to find them via the Wayback Machine. So there seems to be a, perhaps a possible co-op ongoing. And with this cliffhanger, we will uh, move on to the chicken of the week and we will update you on uh, new developments. So when was the picture taken? I saw that on Twitter, but when was the picture of taken? May. So at some point when the kayaking has been banned by FIDE, uh, I think already uh, is my impression. And uh, where he was uh, okay. fighting with both me and Mr. Sutovsky on Twitter separately. So we had like a, you know, threesome with fights going in actually all three, di all, all directions, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, you know, so. Uh, a Mexican standoff. That's how it uh, works. Uh, perhaps. I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> Okay, shall we remind you next week or will you remember by yourself? Like, uh, uh, I, there could be new fights that take over my focus, <laughs> but uh, the chances is that I will remember this. Yeah. That would be good, yeah. <laughs> okay, then we have to get to the most exciting category of all Chicken of the Week. I want to nominate Maxime because he made a very quick draw with the white pieces against Ali Reza again, just like last week. But Laurent, you have a passionate speech prepared in defense of Maxime, no? No, no. actually, it's always uh, the same with uh, uh, Maxime. is good at uh, calculating things. So he calculated that if he would win against Ali Reza, uh, that could, uh, he could lose some the number three spot uh, in the Gunches Tour, which uh, actually is very weird, but... Maxim was doing so poorly in the Sinkerfield Cup that he couldn't improve his ranking. While he could uh, screw up uh, Ali Reza and then Caruana could uh, catch up with him, let's say without playing, actually, and uh, then score more points and take his third place in the overall standing. Which the third place is some kind, I think it's big money, I think it's 40,000, and also qualifies for the next Grand Tour, which... I think Peter will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the next Grand Chess Tour is a qualifier for uh, the next candidates. So it's quite important. And that's the problem with this uh, kind of tour, that sometimes uh, we had this example even in Ch Champion Chess Tour, that uh, sometimes it's against your interest to, to, to win a game, uh, <laughs> simply because uh, there is this overall standing, which... Uh, You, you can screw up one opponent, but uh, it's not good. It's not good f for you for your overall uh, uh, standing. So yeah, that was just uh, pure uh, from a pure mathematic, mathematic, mathematical point of view. It was a good decision by uh, by. MVP. My question wouldn't it have been even better to lose like that. Like that, he really makes sure Ali Reza finishes first, and no one can overtake him if he doesn't get any points. No, actually, uh, no, the, the point was Kawana not catching up and Kawana didn't play the last round because he was supposed to play. Ah, by Marcus. the draw, he made sure. So, so losing wouldn't have made him better. So by the draw, if he would lose, then there would be some, some cases where, um, uh, Kawana was catching up hmm? and some. No, I mean, if Maxim where, lost, where he, he yeah, would be first. I mean, then he would be. Ah, but it would be the same. Okay. Okay. The same. I mean, like, it, it didn't matter. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Then do I need a different chicken? Because he just he just uh, used math. I think in general you could As fighting spirit in the Sinkerfield Cup suffered a bit for for quite some players after that happened. No, like there were still decisive games, but there were also the bunch bunch of quick draws. You could nominate us for not uh, <coughs> Going full transparency, not... Uh, I don't know. It's the usual question. Shall we just go with Giri as usual? <laughs> Has he done anything, Chicken? I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to say Giri, uh, so you better as always, I, I'm, I'm okay. taking Giri, uh, <laughs> of course, because he was, he was like tweeting the whole week, making cheap jokes about this Carlsen Neiman stuff, but never gave his, uh, his honest opinion. So this is very, very Chicken-esque, you know, making jokes. One left, uh, right, but yeah, never, never in the center. Right. Let's say no, not, don't give his, uh, his opinion at all. So, uh, yeah, he's by default and, uh, yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's my chicken. Mm -hmm. I was also accused of more chicken. chicken than usual because I did some YouTube videos giving my opinion, but I gave them in German 
I did them in German, <laughs> like I do all my YouTube videos. But um, chess detectives were were onto my case that I only did them in German, not having to repeat reveal my true opinion in the common tongue. So my secret YouTube videos, I caught I caught some heat for. Um, Respect. And other chicken. Nominees, Peter Sutovsky, is he chickening out from answering your tweets, maybe? Yeah, that's actually a good point. I mean, whenever I come up with sort of... Uh, Why doesn't he just block you? Wouldn't it make his life so much I think we have uh, a... Easier? It sounds funny. We are having a game of chicken about that, right? It would feel like a failure if you blocked the other ones. Probably we're sort of, you know, trying to push one in the direction. But no, he... But you don't want to block him, no? Like every second tweet of yours is, hey, at Emil Sutovsky, like that. Well, that is because uh, I think it's uh, necessary to uh, correct something so that uh, his, uh, you know, propaganda doesn't stand on a post. Um, so... Wow. Wow, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I... Well, I don't think he's a chicken. I think he's a calculated, intelligent person. Um, so, no, I don't think that he's chickening out in a way. Um, I want to nominate myself, actually, uh, I think. But not for the reason everybody wants. I mean, there has been so many who is pushing me to say something uh, about this uh, uh, thing. Uh, but uh, that, I think, is correct that I um, that I don't do that. I just say no comment. But uh, I had actually prepared a long monologue about uh, transparency but that i chickened out of, of doing so I mean, yeah i'm sorry can, can we do it next week i'm sure the people <laughs> yeah no can't I'm, wait i'm sorry that's not gonna happen it seems uh, that, that is really a great great pity sad and yeah if you can be blamed for anything then not holding that monologue <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's also your your speech on probability that we had. Yeah, we also well that was like. also. I mean, I think again we are just uh, throwing Loang under the bus. But he was basically Sounds saying good. something on the about probability. I thought was was very wrong, and uh, I wanted to publicly shame and embarrass him while correcting it. Uh, but that also didn't happen. So mm. actually, that's I, agree. That's, I agree. That's some amazing cliffhangers for next week. Tune in next week. We will start with Peter's lecture on transparency, then Peter's lecture on probability, and then Peter will tell us what's up with FIDE this week. Um, no, we'll, we'll also have the Niemann Carlsen matchup to, to comment on. They will play on, on Monday. No, like it should be fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, things, uh, well, I mean, a lot seems to happen in chess these days, right? I remember even someone was tweeting there's no drama in chess, but it uh, seemed to change. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay. okay. See you next week. We Thank you very much. Bye bye. bye, -bye.